Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson of the Watauga County Arts Council. And you know, one of the most exciting things about living in this area is the arts. And I'm saying that as the Arts Council Director, I know, but you know, there's just so many creative people all around us. And we have had this wealth of creativity around us for generations, but in this past several years, it has just really exploded. And a big part of that explosion over the years has been the lady that I have with me today. This is Mickey Stein. Mickey, you've been a big part of the arts community in our in our area for a long time. Almost 40 years I've been here. Wow. <laughs> now, have you lived here full time for 40 no, years? No, I lived in Chapel Hill. I'm in Florida. All right. And then when you were in Florida, you had a reputation as a ceramic artist. I did particular. mostly ceramics. I belonged to Ceramic League of Miami and Florida Craftsmen. Uh-huh. And... Um, American Craft Council, and that was my love. As years went by, I went back to painting because physically, ceramic got to be uh, the physical effort of, of yeah. My pieces. back started uh -huh. to go, <laughs> and I think a lot of ceramic artists find that the way we used to do ceramics was very stressful physically, but it was a wonderful way to do it and. I think I can go back with my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and do pinch pots, I think, again. There you go. I love to do There's pinch always pots. a way. There's <laughs> always a way. But then I went back to painting, which was the original uh, thing that I loved. Uh, and uh, I decided to try pastels. That was a little over 10, 12 years ago. And there weren't too many pastel artists up uh -huh. in this community. Mm -hmm. But then we developed a few... Uh, classes and workshops, uh, and uh, it was an exciting adventure for me to go back into using my hands and getting messy in the studio with clay. You like to get with, messy, don't you? <laughs> yes, right. So um, it, it's been a, a very interesting adventure from painting to clay, then back to painting back again. Back to painting. Well, tell me how you got started in the arts. What, what got well, you Well, um, I always loved to draw. I remember sitting in biology class and loving to make the little animals and the, the little things they wanted you to draw. And to me, that was wonderful. And then in high school, because of I was able to accelerate my classes, I took double art class. I remember my art teacher, Helen Spatch, at Miami High School. She was a wonderful teacher and artist. And we'd spend two hours in that classroom. It was wartime. The supplies were in short demand. Mm -hmm. So we painted mostly on construction paper, mm -hmm. brown, black, red, maybe white, uh, and tempera paint which were this, the old jars of the, temper. The powdered stuff, and, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And um, so that was what we mostly did, and I developed a love for the arts and planned on uh, majoring in college mm -hmm. and that, but the war accelerated, and everybody, I remember my graduating class in 1943, everyone went off to service. Yeah. So most of us did part-time college work. I d took classes at the University of Miami, and but I worked. I had a job, mm -hmm. and uh, it was I had not a full-time college, but when my husband came back from the Air Force, we started a family. I really spent more time at the university taking courses, and along the way, as the children grew up, I taught in the community arts school after school program uh -huh. for children, and it was exciting. I'd bring all the clay and pieces that they made home and fire them and make sure they didn't explode yes, because, you know, is. young people. <laughs> and then I'd bring them back, and their eyes would pop the next week, and we'd start over again. So it was a very rewarding uh, experience of doing that. And... Um, then in 1971, uh, we bought some land up here in Boone. I just loved it up here. And uh, we built a house. And the children were all just about going off to college. 
And so it became a real family uh, place for all of us to gather. And as it turned out, a lot of the children are artists. Mm -hmm. And my son has a fine arts degree. And he's an architectural photographer and uh, artist. And so the house is, we built another studio and everyone just loves to go out there and have a good time. So they come up here not just to enjoy the mountains, but to enjoy the art. They might take uh -huh. a hike and take a picture and come back and do something in the How studio. How wonderful. I have a little two-year-old starting to do it. <laughs> If the tradition continues. I hope so. I hope so. Mickey is our featured artist in the main gallery of the Blue Ridge Art Space, and uh, we also have other wonderful exhibits around that as well. But a little corner of Mickey's exhibit is your son Bob's. Uh, yes. We have a little section with his work uh, where we're kind of showcasing the like mother, like son tradition that right. moves on down through the family. Yes. And so we thought it'd be really nice to sort of celebrate that, that family heritage in her retrospective exhibit. So we have worked there from, I think we have your first piece you talked about. One of them, my, uh -huh. I had a series and my daughter plays, who lives out west, she said, please let me have some that I can start to collect Mm -hmm. a ret sort of a retrospective. She right. had a lot of the Western work was done near where she lived. Right. And um, so I gave her a couple of them and uh, she couldn't ship them back in time. But they were interesting faces of East Indian or Island women, I guess, more. And uh, then somehow I branched into landscapes, which was the thing that drew me to Boone, because we always have a different thing to draw every single day. Exactly. You can go back out and do one barn and do it the next day, and it has a different feeling. Now, this piece behind us is called Otter Creek, something like Yes, well, it has a family name, but the real name is Polcat Creek. Polcat It's right mm -hmm. between... Uh, the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone and it's not far from the Flag Ranch and we went back in the back country. My son, my daughter and my husband were fly fishing. I was having a good time hiking and taking pictures. Uh -huh. but I call it Grassy Creek but it just it was the most idyllic spot. You could see the mountains far away and it just had such a beautiful perfect feel about them and of course they had a good time getting trout. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it's, it's, and you know it's a wonderful way to uh, journal the, the places you've been yes, is to have is. these. I would sketch them sometimes take pictures of them and then come back to this, the studio. Most of these were painted in Boone as a memory of that trip. After you, from your work that you've yes, done. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a couple of sketchbooks books <clears throat> that have some of the sketches in it. And the other picture is of the beautiful sunset on the Grand, in the Grand Tetons. And, uh, and the huge the colors, skies. Uh -huh. The huge skies. I mean, we have gorgeous skies here. Too, we do. But sometimes you can't get the whole panoramic feeling as they do out west. That's really, yeah, what they're known for in that yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they are. So. so I've had a wonderful experience painting in both places. Well, I'm going to ask you an unfair question. Which is more fun, pastels or clay? I guess in a lot of ways pastels. I have enjoyed going back to color. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. See, when I do the pastels, I do oxides on, this is a off-white clay that has a lot of grog in it, very sculptural clay. Uh -huh. And then I design it, the pieces, and then I use uh, red iron uh, or a magnesium, sometimes cobalt, there might be a little blue in rubbed in here. Wow. And so it's, it's not gas fired, it's electric fired. This is this is a very textural piece. It's and I noticed that all I, of your I, clay pieces that we have at least are very textural. Yes. Whereas some people's clay work is very smooth and, and mm -hmm. very uh, often thrown pots in particular are are very smooth, but yours are hand built. 
and they if by hand build I mean that they are not thrown on a wheel. These are these are built I guess this was from a slab or was this a coil? No, that's a slab. It's a slab, uh huh. And so you were able to, to you built the the shape and then you started just working into the textures yes, and, the, and, and I the guess I started out feeling like uh like a landscape that this mm -hmm. is a painting and I might have liked the shape of something I use. Sometimes I used to make <clears throat> my own um, stamps more or less out of clay mm -hmm. so that this probably is a piece of wood that I saw that I loved and uh, and you used its used texture. It yeah. uh -huh. That is really cool. Memory. She's got several pieces that are Raku as well. I didn't right. bring a Raku pop. I started to do Raku when it was not a popular media. I had a wonderful friend, um, Juanita May, down in uh, Carl Gables, and she had gone to Chicago Art Institute and studied with a couple of the masters who had come back from Japan. Mm -hmm. And so we started experimenting. And it was, it's a spontaneous feeling again. And uh, we did that. Then I studied with a wonderful woman through the Ceramic League. She came from uh, San Ildefonso Pueblo mm -hmm. in Santa Fe. And she was at the same uh, Pueblo as Maria, who was the most famous of the San Ildefonso potters. And she brought some clay with us, with her. And it was an exciting moment of learning the technique that right. they had. Uh -huh. And we even fired in a uh, cow dung. Really? She, yes. We, she, <laughs> we had our little, what they call pops or pots. Uh -huh. And we uh, built up a fire. And amazing the chemicals in there turned the pot into different colors. Um, it was a it was a smoking and Indian stuff was so much in a way like Raku and yet it's mm -hmm. on a different culture. Huh. But So it's uh, their version of Raku kind of they're kind of uh -huh. spontaneously smoking. That's how they got some of those deep black uh, clay uh, finishes. Really? Okay. And um, Maria, I did, my husband did buy me one of Maria's pots from the museum, and I have since given it to someone who has started a collection. But I felt like uh, I couldn't travel around with that pot. It was too valuable to be right. just in a home. And these people were starting an Indian collection. So you put it so into So I it. gave it to them, or sold it to them. That's and so they good. helped them start their collection. But the Native Americans, and when you go out to New Mexico and Arizona, you see the work they do. It's um, most amazing that mm -hmm. they've carried on their tradition and taken it more contemporary even. Interesting. And uh, I wish I could go out and see what's happened in the Pueblos because they have their own gift shops now. And uh, they... Uh, Carry, I know Maria's son has carried on the tradition. And a lot of people have, you know, gone out there to, to kind of observe and study. Well, what got you started in clay? I mean, you, you know, you well, began with the tempera. I was in know? a workshop. Just a, a lot of artists got together. Mm -hmm. It was an early museum idea in Miami. Mm -hmm. It wasn't very, it was just a nice big building. And we were painting and, um, I was having some trouble with my arthritis, which has later been one of my problems. And I was like stretching and movement. And one of my friends who later came up here and had a home on Seven Devils, Jeannie Stemple. And she was known as a sculptor. And she was just a beautiful work. She said, I'm painting here just to, you know, get back to painting. She said, you look miserable. I said, yes, I'm having some physical problems. She said, come to my studio. You can work in clay. You don't have to do other things. Huh. Well, it was such fun to get back. I'd, everybody did a little clay at one time or another uh -huh. when they were young. 
And I still have the first couple of pieces that I did in her studio. And then later, she, I found out she was up here. She didn't live that far from me in Carl Gables. <clears throat> and so she put me on the track back to Clay. Okay. And there were, there were more good potters in Miami than that wanted to teach and be, I think that's how we started the ceramic life. I was going to say, you were very involved in, in ceramic yeah, league down it there. It was very, they, we bought a facility and had all the equipment and wow. uh, it was before the junior colleges and the colleges had so much equipment mm -hmm. and uh, some very fine artists emerged from that group. Very special opportunity. Yes. Yeah. And I think uh, I, you know, remember those days. And I know there's some people that come up here in the summer that had spent time in the Ceramic League and know me basically from the Ceramic League of Miami. Well, that's interesting because when I was working on your bio for your yeah. exhibit, uh, it was kind of like you had two pieces. You know, you had the ceramics and, and the work that you did with that and then the pastels. And you said you switched more or less from ceramics to pastels as a primary medium because of your health. Right. And so the pastels, but you know, you've won awards in both. Yes, and that was the exciting part. And I've had a lot of good friends in both areas of arts. And uh, in fact, I called Herb Cohn yesterday and mm -hmm. he could, he's not being able to come up here right now. But I said, Herb, you won't, you'll be so excited. I used to go over to his studio in Blowing Rock and just work in another table. He'd be throwing mm -hmm. his pots and I'd be hand building just to be around people who are interested in the arts and you're stimulated right. by their wonderful works and, I and think, their critiques. I think you've coined it pretty well there because that I think the arts community has has communicated with each other, has associated right. with each other, has enjoyed springing off the creativity of right. other people. You know, right. you're inspired by what you're watching him do, so then you work in your own work. And it's just like you just kind of that, that camaraderie of being close right. to each other and just feeling that creative energy together, you know, which has really, really made the arts community so wonderful. And a lot of the artists who can come back here, come mm -hmm. back here. I know Lynn Jenkins is back in Valley Cruises, and I haven't seen her, but I remember when she first did her first piece of Raku, she was so excited. It was a whole different media for her. Yeah. But that's what happens with Clay. It's, you're very experimental. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a fun thing to do. Most of us don't get to experiment that much in life, but that was a special time. So you've me. surrounded yourself all of your life with the arts. Absolutely. And you're spreading it on. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> We're very proud to have you exhibiting uh, at the Blue so Ridge Arts I'm Space. very proud to have a retrospective with the Watauga Arts Council. Well, we're very it's grateful very special. that you're Thank willing you. to share it with us. So. Thank you. So, what, you know, this is only our second uh, big exhibit in the uh, Blue Ridge Art Space, and to be able to showcase someone like Mickey is just a real honor. And so Thank we're very so grateful to you for sharing it. with us. So I encourage you to come by and check out this beautiful, beautiful exhibit. Uh, it will be up all the way till the uh, 5th of August. And you'll be able to see the work. Uh, we're technically open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 until 6. That's when the gift shop's open. But realistically, if we're there, you may come in and check out the art. We're always delighted to have folks coming in and enjoying the artwork. And we're hoping to expand our hours as we acquire more visitors, I mean, more volunteers. Uh, so if you would like to help us with that, we would be very open to inviting you to become one of our volunteers and surrounding yourself with beautiful art all the time. So it would be a great opportunity to be there. It's so. wonderful. It's a wonderful community of artists of all kinds. Well, you're kind of a great uh, opportunity for us to celebrate that. Thank you. Thank and so you. We're, we're delighted to have it, and we're delighted to have your work and you with us. And thank you so much for sharing with us and I'm sharing your pleasure. amazing work. So. Thank you for joining us, too. Be sure you come by the Blue Ridge Arts Space. We're located at the sh uh, corner of Chatelaine and State Farm. The Watauga County Arts Council works very hard to uh, achieve our goal of making the arts a presence in our community, and this is yet another way to do that. Please make yourself a part of the arts. Check out the uh, website, watauga-arts.org, for this and a whole lot more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.